Hello, welcome back to this series. Now we're on day seven of this series where we're learning how to use Apache Spark within Microsoft Fabric. Obviously Spark is the engine that we use in the data engineering experience and the data science experience. And today we're gonna to be starting to look at various data engineering kind of tasks, or at least how do we operate on data frames to perform really common actions. And this is the what we're gonna be looking at today. We're gonna to be reading some data into our data frame, viewing our data, exploring schemas, doing some column operations, adding new columns, removing columns, and that's what we're gonna be doing today. So let's dive into it. As ever, the notebook is stored on GitHub, so make sure you go to github.com forward slash learn Microsoft Fabric, link in the description. You can follow along with me here. So let's start by just getting some data into a data frame. As we've done many times before, we're using spark.read.csv. And again, this is using the property sales data set, which I've stored in our Lakehouse files area. That data set again is available on the GitHub. So you can go there to check that out. Okay, so now we have some data in our data frame. Let's just show that. So we can use a few different methods to visualize our data and each of them have positives and negative, I would say. The first way that we can look at our data in a data frame is with df.show. So it's just gonna print out this kind of like textual based summary of what's in our data frame. And it's quite good because it tends to use space quite well. So you generally can see all of the columns unless you have lots and lots of columns, but for small data sets, it's useful. Another way you can view your data is by calling display and passing in the data frame that you want to visualize. And we've seen this before, it gives us this interactive view of our data. We can do some more fancy things like change the column widths. And we can also do ordering. So if I want to look at my data, what the highest sales price is, well, it's this one. You can also export this to CSV, JSON, XML. And you can also visualize your data as a chart. Um, you know, not the best visualization. Hopefully we can create some better ones than that, but it gives you a bit of a very quick overview of the data. So that's display. We can also call df.head, and this is just gonna show us the first X number of rows. So I'm passing in two. So in this case, what I'm doing is saying, okay, get me my data frame. And I just want the first two rows of that data frame. You can have millions and millions of rows in this data frame. I only want the first two. And then you're passing that into the display function. So you're saying, okay, I want that fancy interactive table view, but I only want the first two rows. So that's what that's gonna look like. Next up, I want to look at schemas. And right from one of the early videos, I explained the importance of schemas in Spark and in data frames. So how do we interact with schemas? Well, we've seen this one before, the print schema. We can call print schema, which is a function of our data frame. And we can see, okay, these are the different columns, the column types, and whether it accepts null values or not. So that's printing out the schema, as the, the name suggests. Well, we've seen this one before, df.datatypes. And we can explore just the data types and it returns a list of tuples and each tuple has the column name and the column type, which is useful. Again, we can use that in a variety of different ways. And sometimes it's good to know what the data type is of our columns, but it's not returning the full schema. You know, we don't have this null values in that method. But what if we actually want to return the schema, not just print it, but what is the actual schema? Well, we can use df.schema. And if you've been following this series right from the beginning, this might start to look familiar to you. We've got the struct type and the struct field, which is the way of defining schemas within Spark, or at least one way. So this could be really handy to access the actual schema of a data frame. 
Say, for example, you want to do something like this. So in this example, we're using df.schema, but we're storing the schema as source schema, for example. And this saves us having to explicitly write out our schema for a new data frame if we have one that already exists. Can you imagine if your data frame has 300 columns, then the schema is going to be pretty large. And so if we can just extract that schema and maybe we want to create a new piece of data that uses that same schema, well, we can just call df.schema. And then when we're reading in a new file, we can just use the source schema, right? We can pass in schema equals source schema. And so the CSV file must conform to that schema. So that's a useful thing to know there. Next up, let's move into some column operations. And we can view which columns we have by calling df.columns. And here it's just going to return us a list of the column names. Next, let's look at, okay, how do we select just one column? Now in our data set, we've got this column called type. So what I'm doing here is I'm calling select and I'm passing in the column name that I want to return. Uh, and I'm, then I'm calling dot show to print the results basically into this workbook, into this notebook. And one thing to note is if I just do type on this, let's just remove this for a second. So here you can see that it's returning a data frame. So we're selecting one column but it's not returning a column type, it's giving us data frame, which is useful because we can do data frame operations on it. So that's something to bear in mind with the select. Okay, we can also do things like renaming columns, which we've seen in the last video. So we can call df with column renamed, and we're gonna pass in the, the old column name and the new column name. So we want to change it from address with a, with a space to just address. And if we just run this cell, we can see that the column name here has changed, which is what we wanted to do. We can also pass in a list into this select statement. So if we want two columns, then we're gonna pass in a list with the column names. So address and type. So that's gonna return two columns. If we wanna add some new columns, perhaps I wanted to do a new variable called 2x the starts the sale price. I don't know why, this is just a, a dummy example to show you the functionality. Well, I can use this with column function. So I can call df.withColumn, pass in the new column name that I want to give this column. And then some sort of logic as ha how you calculate that column. So in our example, we're doing two times the sale price. So I'm gonna call df, I'm gonna get the sales price column, and I'm gonna times it by two. And so let's just see what that does. Okay, so with all these examples, we need to assign what we're doing here to the, the data frame variable, and that will save this into this data frame. Okay, so here we have our data, and we can see this added this new column called 2x sales price, and lo and behold, it's two times the sales price, so happy days. Next, we're gonna look at removing columns. Oh, we've made a mistake here. This 2x the sales price, actually we don't want that. So what we can do is call df.drop, and we pass in the name of the column that we want to drop. Let's just run this. And again, we're assigning it back to the df variable here to save these changes. Okay, so now we can see that our data frame has been updated. That column that we just created has now been removed again, and we're back to where we started. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it useful. Now we're getting into the core of data frame manipulation, and it's only gonna get more exciting from here. So make sure you're subscribed and leave a comment, any feedback that you've got. I'll be sure to answer all of them. As I said before, this code is available on the GitHub, link in the description. If you're feeling generous, like this video. I'll see you tomorrow for the next one.